Welcome to the SCP Foundation Wiki, where you can browse science fiction short, and significantly not short at all, stories until the end of time. But how do these short stories come to be? Who writes them? Could you write one? The answer to all those questions is yes. Hi, I'm Rad, inventor of the SCP Wiki and first and only author. If you are watching this, it probably means you've read the likes of 049, 096, and 106. Maybe if you're really in this shit, you've even read one that has four digits. But now you've grown tired with just reading. Now you want to get into crafting your own SCP article. And let me tell you, you have come to the right place. Welcome to my instructional video about how to write an SCP that's actually good. The best teacher, aside from me, of course, is experience. That means in order to grasp what makes an SCP truly good, you have to take a look at the best SCPs. Let's take a look at one of the most highly rated pages on the site. Let's look at something else. SCP-247 was among the first articles I ever read, actually. Naturally, I am still very much an enjoyer of it. At 1500 words, it's pretty long for a series one. Most of these words come in the form of experiment logs, which can often wear out their welcome really quickly. But in spite of that trend, 247 manages to keep its logs short and sweet and compelling. The idea for the anomaly itself is clever and creative in its reveal and its execution, making for quite an interesting read. Plus, it only has three data expunges, which is quite the selling point to get me personally to read series one articles. Ah yes, The Plagued Doctor. Part of this article's immense popularity is due to its inclusion of real audio accompanying its dialogue portions, featuring the voices of The Sherm from Site42 and The Volgun from The Volgun. And I'm not implying that this article is so overwhelmingly popular because people are simps, but... Personally, I find it hard not to view 049 as being very overrated. The clinical language is often overwritten, 049's dialogue is a bit anachronistic, the zombies aren't terribly exciting or original, and it suffers from a copious overuse of my worst enemy, ellipses. Plus, the fact that 049 came into custody willingly kind of jars my suspension of disbelief. I would have had an easier time buying it if it was really indecisive about whether it wanted to be in or out. SCP-529, titled Josie the Half-Cat, is a short Series 1 article about a cat who is only the front half. While this article definitely fits the bill of a Series 1 piece of flash fiction, it's short, simple, and lacks any kind of story arc. It's also a perfect example of SCP's characteristic clinical format being used outside of the horror genre. While perhaps initially counterintuitive, the coldness of the scientific format of an SCP article works to emphasize the endearing, heartwarming passages of this piece. Also uncharacteristic of newer articles, but very prevalent in Series 1, 529 uses she-her pronouns for the creature rather than the modern it-its exclusively. Ordinarily, this would be irritating to me, but in this particular article, the use of more personal, familiar pronouns exemplifies the close relationship the researchers have with Josie the Half-Cat. SCP-087 earned its place in the limelight when it, like many other tremendously popular SCPs, had an indie horror game made about it. Was it a good game? Not particularly. Is it a good article? It could be better. 087 suffers from many of Series 1's recurring issues. It's predictable, riddled with pointless redactions, and the exploration logs are too long for their own good. Also, the ending button is a data expunged, and you, you know how I feel about those. But it does win some points with me with this second image, which is reminiscent of a small creature sitting on your chest very early in the morning, and that's very good. A bit of a hidden gem among Series 1, SCP-637, Viral Cat, is definitely something you should look into reading. The story follows an old woman with a supposedly mimetic cat living in her head, who only she can see. It displays an excellent use of the conprox, building up intrigue and foreshadowing for later events in the article. It also has an actual story arc, which isn't quite as common in this era. And along with its arc, it succeeds in inserting some understated foundation lore, and that certainly works for me. The last addendum makes for a very spooky ending and a great button. Another very famous article, SCP-1981, Ronald Reagan Cut Up While Talking, definitely has its strong points. But is it an example of a perfect article? Let's dig into it. First of all, I know this is a nitpick, but this formatting is incorrect by present standards. Look at all these redactions. Why are they here? Why did this need to be blacked out? One of the transcripts has been redacted entirely, while the next one has not, making me ask myself the question, what was the point of that? The last transcript, while creepy enough, is also a little obvious. I see you has become a very difficult line to make truly scary. The whole piece, I think, would have been stronger if it had ended with this last transcript instead of the note. However, I will give it points for cutting up Ronald Reagan. We love to see that. 
You may have noticed that everything I've highlighted so far have been relatively old articles. If you want to contribute new stories, you can't just imitate the classics. You've got to bring something new and fresh. Let's take a look at some newer pages. SCP-4205 is a format screw of humongous CSS formatting proportions. The article takes place on a screen within a screen. Is this cool? Yes. Does it take an awful lot of time and effort to navigate and therefore read? Also yes. Plus, it makes me very jealous, as the most complex CSS work I have ever done was this. And it doesn't even look good. While this article is mysterious and spooky, it certainly is not a perfect article. He should have touched the eyes more. But it does get some acknowledgement from me because of how much I love shiny little eyes looking at me from the darkness. Easily among the underread and underrated is SCP-6066, The House Where Only Cats Live, which is about a house where only cats live. Obviously, this article is almost perfect and flawless. The imagery is intriguing and evocative even in the clinical format, the exploration logs are concise and attention-grabbing, and the surreal nature of the storyline comes across wonderfully. The ending of the article is excellently dreamlike, but does lose points because all the other cats disappear. The Infinite Ikea, SCP-3008, another famous indie game haver. While passable in its quality, it does have its fair share of problems. The descriptions of the employees I find a little lacking, maybe a little boring. It's my personal opinion that having only humans and employees as the only living creatures in the anomaly is a little bit flat, and that maybe there should be some other animals in there as well. Since it's a very tall building, it would make sense that there would be some animals that are good at things like climbing and lounging on furniture, for example. The journal segment is very long, and it doesn't really include climbing or lounging on the part of the narrator. 6001, a very highly voted contender in the recent 6K con, explores a peaceful parallel universe where anomalies live in peace, as seen through the eyes of a scientist and a cat scientist. It's a beautiful depiction of a utopian other world. It's full of unique perspectives on the various GOIs. It has tons of original takes on different popular articles and characters. It has a fun and interesting twist and a lovely ending, but the dialogue and the new characters are really the best part. It is my own personal held belief that the best way to improve at anything is to observe and analyze the work of others. And the best way to become a good SCP author is just to read a lot of SCPs. I hope that my examples and my analysis have helped you on your journey. You're starting to get it, right? You're starting to see the patterns of what takes an SCP article from simply being good to being great? Of course you are. I always believed in you, my little pog champ. If you followed my- oh my god, it's bright, hello, hi, the sun. If you follow my advice to the letter, it will take no time at all before you become the second SCP author. Hello everyone. You'll never guess where I am. I'm not going to tell you. I have a thousand subscribers now. This took me forever to shoot because I am a bad YouTuber. Make sure to uh, subscribe and also like, um, and if you do those things, I will appear. Okay, see you later.